right now on Five on Your Side at 10. Head of the class. The big boost in pay tonight for St. Louis teachers. Plenty of dry time now. I'll time out more rain and thunder chances later this week and then cooler for the weekend. Our top story, pursuing justice for Janae. She was yelling, Dad, I can't feel my legs. I can't feel my legs. A father's emotional testimony as the man accused in a horrific downtown crash finally faces a jury. Tonight, for the first time, we're hearing how the driver charged in the crash that cost Janae Edmondson both of her legs plans to defend himself. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Kelly Jackson. On day one of the Daniel Riley trial, we also heard how the military training of the Tennessee teen's father saved her life. Five on your side's Christine Byers was in the courtroom today. Janae Edmondson was 17 years old when police say Daniel Riley sped through a yield sign in an Audi, struck another car before pinning the teenager between a parked car, severing both of her legs. Assistant Circuit Attorney Adam Field focused his opening statement on whether Riley was reckless. This case is not about an accident. This case is about an utter disregard for the value of human life. Field told jurors to pay attention to Riley's demeanor in body camera footage after the crash. If the defendant says a girl lost her leg, that's all, is something serious going to happen? Defense attorney Dan Deemer told jurors police focus their investigation only on Riley and not the other driver. Daniel Riley was hit broadside by the Malibu in the left rear of the Audi, rendering him incapable of controlling the vehicle from that point forward. James Edmondson was the first to testify today on behalf of the prosecution. He talked about how he was walking here at this intersection at 11th and St. Charles with his daughter just after she had finished playing a volleyball game at the Dome. He said the sound of Riley's car hitting her sounded so much like a grenade that it sent him back to his military training. And my mind actually went from father mode to military. And when I looked down and saw her leg was severed and, and I knew she only had seconds and not minutes, uh, my mind just kind of blocked everything out. And it was like God was just had control of my hands at that time. At the hospital, a doctor told him his quick thinking of using a stranger's belt as a tourniquet was critical. If we hadn't done what we did, should we, uh, we, uh, this would have been a homicide that we we're talking about and not an accident, I mean, not an injury. James Edmondson says his daughter, like many amputees, is struggling to cope with her prosthesis. She's still in the wheelchair. That's her safe haven. That's how she can maneuver. She's feel more secure in the, in the wheelchair. Um, so she has the legs and she do walk, but she's just really having to set them. Christine Byers, five on your side. About a dozen friends and family members showed up to support Riley in court today. Janae Edmondson was not in court, but is expected to be the last person called to testify. The trial is expected to last through this week. Five on your side, we'll be in the courtroom throughout the trial. We'll bring you updates both on air and online. You can get the very latest anytime on KSDK.com and the Five on Your Side app. New tonight, a big pay raise coming to teachers in St. Louis Public Schools. Five on Your Side has learned a local teachers union work with the district to negotiate the largest pay increase in nearly two decades. Brent Solomon is live at the school district's headquarters with a closer look. Brent. Well, Mike, the old saying goes, if you can read this, think a teacher. Tonight, St. Louis Public Schools showing its thanks by giving teachers a 17% pay raise over the next three years. That decision coming out of a special meeting that happened earlier this evening. It begins with a 7% raise next year, followed by an additional 5% in the two years after that. And special education teachers will get an even bigger raise, a total of 22% over three years. I think it's a significant deal. We have seen quite a lot of pay freezes and very small increases in teacher pay uh, across the board. Surrounding states have significantly high, higher teacher pay. So while it sounds significant, it's trying to rectify the situation where teachers in Missouri and particularly in urban areas like St. Louis have been underpaid. Tonight, we also caught up with the group Education Plus, which partners with school districts in our region. 
Leaders there applaud the move and say you may soon see more school districts following suit in order to keep teachers in the profession. In a joint statement, the American Federation of Teachers and St. Louis Public Schools saying earlier today, this agreement not only ensures stability in the classroom, but will also be a tool in retaining our current teachers and staff and attracting high quality new applicants. This is a great backdrop for a story on the continued nationwide teacher shortage and what is being done to combat it. Tomorrow morning, the superintendent here will join the school board president and that teachers union in making the formal announcement. And we plan to be here. Live at SLPS tonight, Brent Solomon, five on your side. Allegations of racism and bus safety have led to an investigation against a school bus company by the NAACP. Nearly 100 bus drivers walked off work last week, called off work last week at St. Louis Public Schools, protesting claims of racial discrimination against Missouri Central Bus Company, which provides transportation for the district. In a news conference today, a mechanic with the company says he made complaints to HR about being racially harassed and raised concerns about faulty bus parts. Another employee says they found a noose in a bus garage last month. Since it is an ongoing investigation, the company declined to comment on the discrimination allegations, but did address the safety concerns. Our vehicles go through a rigorous inspection process, both from a daily inspection from drivers, checking all safety equipment, to a 90-day inspection, and then the state of Missouri comes in annually and conducts their inspection. While bus service has returned to normal, St. Louis Public Schools released this statement earlier today saying, while we do not have control over operations or personnel matters at Missouri Central, it is our hope that the internal conflict and what appears to be serious issues in their workplace environment can be resolved. Tonight, two convicted felons are back behind bars accused of firing the shots that hit the Camp Jackson Fire Station in Cahokia Heights this weekend. Investigators say the men were shooting guns on private property about two miles away. They were arrested for unlawful possession of a firearm. Now, this was the third time the firehouse has been hit in the past few months, but investigators don't believe the men are connected to the two prior incidents. A small Missouri town is without a fire station tonight. It was destroyed in an early morning fire. It was around 530 this morning. The Eminence Era Area Volunteer Fire Department got the call that its only fire station was on fire. That's in Shannon County, about three hours southwest of St. Louis. Crews from five different departments responded, but the closest one was nearly an hour away. The department lost seven trucks and all of its equipment and gear. Help is already pouring in from across the state and the country. We've already got donations, and I got a company or a fire department from the state of Wisconsin already called to offer fire gear. And I've got to return calls to St. Louis fire departments and stuff like that just to, you know, see what they've got to offer. One of the trucks lost in the fire is a pump truck that was at the World Trade Center during 9-11. The cause of the fire is unknown. The state fire marshal's office is investigating. Well, the results are rolling in from Super Tuesday, the biggest delegate grab in primary season. President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump are tightening their grip on their party, party nominations. Our political editor, Mark Maxwell, is here to break down what we're seeing in these numbers, Mark. Fifteen states voted this Super Tuesday. Nikki Haley has only won in one in Vermont. They're still counting votes out in three other states out west. But look, the math is what it is especially when you factor in the margins of Donald Trump's victories tonight. There just is no realistic path to victory for Nikki Haley. Take Virginia, for example, a state Joe Biden won by 10 points in 2020. It's a state where Nikki Haley might have expected to perform well, but she didn't. Trump winning here in a landslide, and this played out largely across most of the map. Massachusetts, another example of Trump winning big in a blue state. Nikki Haley running out of road on this campaign trail to the GOP nomination. Technically, she's not mathematically eliminated just yet, but she'd really have to win almost every other state out there at this point by wide margins. And there's just no indication that GOP voters are willing to break in her direction. Former President Trump celebrated the results moments ago from Mar-a-Lago. They uh, call it Super Tuesday for a reason. This is a big one. All of the problems that you have today, I don't think you would have had any of them. You'd only have success. And that's what's ultimately going to unify this country and unify 
this party. We have a great Republican Party with tremendous talent, and we want to have unity, and we're going to have unity. In Vermont, Nikki Haley wins the delegates there, but the location and the state's reputation could end up backfiring in terms of branding. Trump had turned her win in Washington, D.C. on her by saying that the, quote, swamp had coronated their queen. Now she's winning in a state that elected Bernie Sanders. Trump and his allies certainly uh, may have some fun with that. But unity that Trump called for, that's far from a sure thing. There are warning signs flashing red for Donald Trump in the exit polling data. NBC News asked Republican primary voters in the key state of North Carolina, will you vote for the Republican nominee regardless of who it is? 35% of all of those voters said no, and 78% of Nikki Haley voters said no. That's a state Trump only narrowly won in 2020. If Haley's voters made up largely of moderates and independents were to break toward Biden or just stay home, that makes Donald Trump's path to victory a lot tougher in November. Thank you, Mark. And the Illinois primary is two weeks from today. We have put together a comprehensive voter guide on KSDK.com. You can also text the word guide to 314-425-5355. We'll be happy to send you a link. Tonight, one family scare with their robo vacuum. I had to rush it downstairs and rush it out the front door. Their response from the company and why they're not sweeping this under the rug. Prayers for PK. She is definitely a fighter. A young St. Charles County girl is just hours away from a risky surgery. The outpouring of support from the community. Dry and warmer than average temperatures, but keep the umbrella handy. Rain and thunder are likely later this 